Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the Star City Games Standard Open in Syracuse by the SCG Tour, brought to you by Ultimate Guard and Okie Dokie Dice. I'm Nick Miller alongside Platinum Pro, Invitational Champion, Eli Cassis. How you doing, buddy? Hey, that's a lot of titles. <laughs> titles, titles, titles. I'll for take the Game of Thrones fans out there. <laughs> now, you're playing a Simic Ramp deck. We got to put you on camera here, round one. Yep. And you got all kinds of stuff going on with this deck. Uh, firstly, not quite what uh, Sam Black's doing with his Simic kind of ramp into mass manipulation. You're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I saw his list. It looked pretty cool. I was worried about paying four blue, but still having that green dependency early on. So I went a little bit different route here. And you have a little more creatures as well. So you've got Line of War Elves, Incubation Druid as your mana creatures. Uh, but you also have a Scorn of Limited format Arboreal Grazer here as a extra ramp slash utility creature when you get to play with Neoform. It's, so that's what also is going on with the stack. Take us through that card. Well, it's surprising how good this is just in general, like slowing down the mono red decks, even just blocking the Thief of Sanity. That is the most common thing that he does. Uh, just reach is just awesome for what he does. But then using Neoform with the Grazer, so you're getting the acceleration, and then you can either go get Fibblethip and draw two cards, or you can go get Incubation Druid, and it comes to play with a counter on it, so it taps for three mana. Or you can take one of your Fibblethips later with Neoform and go for Jade Light Ranger. So it's just kind of like you're doing a lot of fun things that are also powerful in the early game with it. Right, you got this little value package included on this ramp deck. So for ramp outside of the mana creatures, we've got Gross Spiral and Nissa's Triumph. Well, Nissa's Triumph doesn't ramp you, but True. it does get you the two lands, which is nice. Uh, you can use it when you have a Nissa out to you to get three, but I don't have any like fun lands to go get. You just can't support it in the mana base to play Blast Zone or any of those other cards that the Mono Green list deck runs, but it's uh, necessary to have a couple in there just for consistency's sake. You only play 24 lands, you really need to cast some really expensive stuff. I just played a Hydroid Crassus for 12 mana. <laughs> it, it was probably turn five, and there was not a Nissa out. <laughs> That's pretty good. That is pretty good. You're right. Your top in here yeah. that you're ramping into, obviously, Hydroid Crassus is nice. Yeah. Nissa here powers out some more broken stuff. You also have Ugin, another powerful Planeswalker. Uh, but I think the cool thing about this deck is the Karn the Great Creator. Creator package here we have going yeah. on with this deck. We're seeing this card pop up in all the old formats because it gets to grab uh, Lattice and just yeah. shut down everyone. You don't get to quite do that, nope. but you have your own stuff going on here. So what uh, what all we grab? I mean, even in Vintage too, the one-sided Null Rod is just powerful. But most of the time you're grabbing Meteor Golem to start, blowing something up that's like the high-pressured threat that they have. And then the following turn, you get the tutor up again because it still just goes to one counter if they're not able to pressure it. And usually they aren't, thanks to the grazer. <laughs> and then you grab Helm of the Host, you tuck that onto the Meteor Golem, and now you have a, uh, what do you call it, Royal Assassin every turn. Yeah. So it's a pretty fun combo. I was just playing against the Blue Red Arc Light deck, and I got to go get the God Pharaoh's statue. statue. Yeah, everything costs two more, and I'm just like, well, I don't have to worry about Phoenix ever again. So it's pretty cool. Right, so you've got the Helm combo with the Meteor Golem, then you've got the statue, and then uh, double Sorcerer Spyglass here for Planeswalkers and such, I imagine. We've seen a lot of Planeswalkers in decks nowadays, so I put a second one. Some lists were even running three, the mono green ones. I don't think I've seen anybody run a blue green version of this. So. Then uh, Navigator's Compass here is just a healing salve, effectively. Yeah. One mana gain three if you want to minus your current. If you're getting pressured by red, it's just sometimes like a good alternative option. Uh, Sentinel Totem here, your graveyard hate. Yep. Yep, great then, Dreadhorde deck coming around now. And then the Immortal Sun, just kind of your value. So there's those decks that run like 16 Planeswalkers. So my thought was you grab the Immortal Sun, even though it hurts you a lot, obviously the benefits of what it does and how it hurts them is outweighing that. So it's in there just in case you run into those matchups and you need something very specific like that. Okay. Then uh, back to the main deck here, because that's kind of part of your main deck when you play with Karn. We've got Nissa here. Looks like sort of your win condition outside of the Golem stuff. Yeah, I'd say it's the most common win con, Hydroid Crassus being number two. Okay. And then Entrancing Melody. So you just kind of need answers to certain things, like Gamma Electromancer remaining unanswered is really annoying. Or if they Entrancing Melody your Crassus, you almost can't deal with your own, so you need to Entrancing Melody it back. It was just kind of necessary to run two. I almost wish I had a third one on the sideboard. It's also very effective against the model white matchup, which is really important too. Okay. Now, when did the wheels start turning on this deck? And when did you start tuning it? 
and how'd you come apart sure. with all this? I was testing on Arena and I started with Limited, I hit Mythic, and then I'm like, all right, I really need to play Standard now because there's this qualifier next weekend. So I picked up the deck everybody thinks is the best, Esper first, and I just ran into a lot of matchups that just felt iffy. It's like a good 60-65% deck, but I wanted to see if I could build anything that might go outside of that. Uh, then I got stumped by this mono green version of this deck that ran Karn the Great Creator and Nissa, and the two of them were just too powerful for me to stop. They were just so fast. And I'm like, well, how can I incorporate this but not have it be a budget deck? Because that's what everybody was advertising that deck as. Yeah. It was a budget deck. So I thought, well, let me see what colors are available. Nissa plus Hydra and Crassus seemed really good to me. And then you got cards like Growth Spiral and you got Counter Magic in the sideboard. I'm like, all right, let me try this out. And that's what, that's what came of it. And how do you like it? Is it? How does it fare against the top decks coming into this weekend? Well, we already saw on camera I beat Esper in round one, and I just beat Arclight uh, in round two. In game three, I even won. I was on a double mull, and uh, he won one game that I flooded out. So it's felt pretty strong so far. I haven't played against the aggro decks yet. That'll be the true test. I think sure. it's great against control. Aggro, it's close. I think it's better against mono red than it is against mono white. So if you're in a field of mono white, test it thoroughly. For whatever reason, nobody was playing Mono White online, so I actually haven't really played the matchup much. So that's my worry, is that deck. All right, and then the sideboard outside of the Karn Tutor package, you got three Negates, three Thrashing Brontodons as well. What are those uh, four? Well, Brontodons are surprisingly really good against the aggro decks. The four defense has just been fantastic. And the option to kill like a Conclave Tribunal and bring back a Planeswalker and start doing bonkers stuff is really good. Also, you need to kill that format of Red Enchantment that funnels that deck yeah. so these are just kind of necessary in those matchups and then the negates are more for the combo decks decks that even try to go over what we're trying to do so we need to make sure people aren't taking infinite turns for instance right we've seen a downtick on the nexus decks uh thankfully for us here on coverage <laughs> uh anything else you're trying to avoid with this deck or are you pretty happy with it i'm pretty happy with it where it's positioned i guess other rogue decks might fare a chance if they have a, like a similar growth strategy but uh other than that i'm pretty comfortable i think if people are running a lot of that uh what's two black kill a planeswalker elder spell yeah if the people are running a lot of elder spells and their own planeswalkers i also might be in trouble because that's a good combination to beat this deck uh, we don't present enough threats to deal with Planeswalkers, and if they have an ultimate ability, we might be uh, packing it in from that. Yeah. All right, well, so far you haven't faced that. You've played against two of the top decks. You're 2-0 so far. Off to a great start. Ely, thanks for filling us in here with the Simic Ram deck. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all week long for the action here in Syracuse.